Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rise of the Phoenix, and this video is going to be a faction overview or deep dive for the elf factions, elven factions. I'm not sure which is technically grammatically correct. I assume elven. Uh, but anyways, it's for Linden and also Lothlorien. I've made a fun new account here on a random server. I'm apparently Tactician261063. Uh, I didn't have enough gems to change my name, so that's what we're going with. But if you guys enjoy my content before we get into things, please do consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Welcome back, everyone. First up, let's talk about the faction bonuses. Lothlorien's faction bonus, I have London's pulled up right now, but I'm going to talk about Lothlorien's first. They get a 5% commander EXP bonus. I think it is one of the best faction bonuses in the game because of the snowball effect that it can have. That means that your commanders are going to be higher level quicker than other people's commanders, and with how much EXP it takes, to get to level 50 and we can have a little fun pop quiz potentially in the comment section at what level do you think your commander is 50 percent of the way so halfway to level 50. i'm going to take like a five second pause if anybody wants to put a comment down in the comment section below just to see if your answer is going to line up with what the correct answer is so five four three two one probably not five seconds anyways Level 45, I'm pretty sure it's 45. It's either 40 or 45. I have the data somewhere, but I'm pretty sure it's level 45 is the halfway point for your commander to hit level 50. This means 5% EXP from levels one to level 50 is massive. And then the early game snowball effect that it can have is an extra level sooner, means you can start taking your 130s and 150s sooner, start taking your 200s sooner, take a 300 sooner, etc., etc. Absolutely amazing faction bonus. Linden gets a probably somewhat worse version of Mordor's. Not the worst, but it's a pretty like mid-level B-tier faction bonus. It's all right. The thing is, like in my experience every season so far, although I haven't played season three yet, Eventually, I just get to the point where I have as many resources as I could ever possibly want, and then some, especially once my market gets to max level and I can trade for 80%. So I don't tend to value resource bonuses super highly in the long run. However, it might help make your early game a bit smoother. As far as tier 4 units go, let's talk about the long shot first, because it's a bit complicated. So this guy... Looks awesome in my opinion, actually. Looks super cool. They have Keen Eye, which gives them a chance to gain Pursuit. Pursuit isn't as good as it used to be. For anybody that doesn't know, it gives them a chance to ignore the target's evasion status. They used to be really good when Oathbreakers could evade physical damage. Now they can't. It's a little bit of a niche thing. You could level it up if you're fighting like Gandalfs or anybody, maybe Grima, that's running his evasion skills. Not the worst but not exactly a wonderful skill in my opinion. And then Volley, this is where they get complicated. So Volley says against, <clears throat> excuse me, against two targets on rounds one, four, seven, and 10, you attack for a percent of your normal damage. It goes up to, I believe, 150% of your normal damage, which is a base of 55 to 56, 50 of these guys per command. I won't bore you all with the time and details of the math, but if they are constantly hitting two targets every single round consistently, they will do a bit better than Sentinels. If they're facing one unit armies or if one of the units that they're hitting happens to die and now there's only one unit left, if they get stunned or madness or you know some something prevents them from attacking on one of those rounds, for example, you know, all the Nazgul commanders can stun them on round one. Gandalfs can stun them on round one. Um, they're going to perform actually a bit worse than Sentinels if they get messed with on those rounds or they don't always hit two targets. The big downside of this ability and the reason I think they're not very good, normal attacks are disabled. 
So I'm about 95% sure in saying that sources of follow-up, so two attacks per round, such as Convener or Haldir, uh, he has an ability that lets ranged units attack twice per round. That doesn't happen for these guys, and that's why I think they're super awkward. I really, really don't like them. Honestly, I rate them as pretty low down on the tier 4 unit totem pole. Maybe they're better than Arnors and like runes t4 units maybe better than mordors i don't know honestly these guys aren't super awesome march wardens which i am not gonna pull up right now are pretty much just better sentinels they come with baked in sun immunity and they do a bit more damage than sentinels and they are a lot more survivable than sentinels the sun immunity is the super nice thing if you are going to be running long shots, you definitely want these guys to have a stun immunity helmet so that their round one attack does go off. Otherwise, I think you're going to lose a lot of value there. Let's talk about early game buildings for the Elven factions. The Hunter range is a very nice building. All of these units are quite solid and you'll get a lot of mileage out of your Sentinels, being one of the most consistent and one of the highest DPS units in the game. These guys are just pretty good against everything. The big downside of elves in the early game is you don't have a front line until you hit the warden training ground and unlock wardens and eventually heralds. The uh, <coughs> excuse me, the other downside of this is that these guys aren't particularly tanky. Like they're not that bad, but compared to guardians, they're not going to do what you want them to do as an elf which is just sit there and take damage. The Rohirrim Quarters, honestly, as the Elves, I would probably completely skip these three buildings, just upgrade the Quarters. I suppose if you want some type of front line, you could get the Light Cav Stable, but these guys are not particularly tanky units. The Light Cavalry line is a damage line. As far as Numenorean Quarters go, you could opt to go for a Spearman, although if you look at the stats, 32 health, 51 defense. Let's compare that to these tier twos, 28 health, 50 defense. Honestly, I would just go with the Warden Training Ground because you're going to have to build it for your chapter objectives anyway. The real star of the Numenorean Quarters for you is going to be the Horseman Stable. Knights and Cataphracts are both godly S tier units. You'll be making use of them all throughout the season. And the other thing you're going to want to focus on, in my opinion, early game is getting to Guardians. These guys are going to give you the front line that you need for your ranged units to just shred the enemy. So both as Loth and as Linden, that's what I would suggest. Hunter range for sure. Bow Knights, once you want to start taking 200 power tiles. Wardens for the early game, but ultimately you're going to want to transition to some combination of Cataphracts and Guardians as your frontline meat shield. Later on, if you are fighting like Gondor or Rohan, potentially Arnor in later seasons with Bree Riders, you might want to pick up Guards of the Tower somewhat early if you're going to be in early wars against those factions as they can help counter cavalry. Um, but yeah, those are definitely the star units. Goat Riders eventually you'll probably take as well. For the most part, I would probably ignore Dunedain until much later. Because if you're Loth or Linden, you're not going to be fighting factions that are going to be fielding lots of ranged units. In the same way that if you were, say, Arnor or Gondor, potentially fighting Loth or Linden or Leon, you might actually want these guys. These guys are kind of your counter, and since you don't need to counter yourself, you don't necessarily have to have access to them quite as early as other factions might. And finally, we'll finish up by talking about the political situation of each faction. We'll do Linden first because they are more straightforward. Linden is relatively safe in the early game. They're off at the, their own corner of the map. Arnor tends not to be played that much. Isengard also tends not to be played that much. So your first two major enemies are likely to be Angmar or Gondor. Well, Gondor is going to most likely want to deal with Mordor and potentially even want to deal with Rohan if they can't work out an alliance with Rohan. So I think it's generally unlikely 
that Gondor is going to want to come all the way west to eat up your land, although certainly possible depending on the diplomacy of the server. Angmar could be a strong early opponent for you, though, as they're going to want to take land at the west to get their tiles, get their economy rolling before they engage in a major war in the east against Loth, Erebor, or Rohan. So you might find yourselves at odds with Angmar early. However, you both have a vested interest in not fighting each other, because if you can work out a fair land deal as far as the west goes, that frees them up to grind up their commanders, work on their economies, fight in the east, frees you up to also fight in the east. Angmar can naturally come down through the middle here or up through the top of the map, whereas you can opt to go over through Orthanc or even all the way south through Gondor. So I do think that's actually a pretty reasonable diplomatic option if you're able to work it out. Loth, on the other hand, oh, they are an absolute cluster of a faction as far as their start goes. Their territories are not connected, which can make early game long marches and relocations more awkward as they're going to take a lot more time since they're going to generally be traveling a lot further. And it also means that they have an early game border with Rohan, a popular and powerful faction. They have an early border with Erebor, a popular and powerful faction. And to top it all off, they have an early border with Angmar, which is an increasingly popular evil faction. I think Mordor is still technically more popular, but Angmar is definitely gaining steam, particularly in Season 2, in my experience. So, yeah, you have three borders with three different factions, all of which tend to be highly played and powerful factions. You're in the center of everything. You start spread out. In my opinion, it's just an absolute mess, an absolute nightmare. The one blessing that Lothlorien has is you potentially do have early access to Aemon Lank, which has tons and tons of resources. You also have early access to Celebrant and Fangorn to grind on Ents, and it also is full of awesome wood tiles. So if you're able to somehow not get 3v1 or 2v1 ganked in the early game, you do have a lot of potential to grow and grind commanders and become extremely powerful, but it is probably the messiest start of any faction in my opinion. Like I've said in my Rohan video, I think they're safer than people realize, and I even think Gondor is a bit safer than people realize. Maybe the only worst start is Isengard, although Loth start, they're both just so freaking bad that it's just a diplomatic nightmare. If you're going to play these guys in Season 2, Season 3, you really need to have some amazing diplomats that are able to work out some good deals so that you can stay alive, grind up, develop your economy, and use your higher level commanders in an early war to solidify your position in the middle of the map and then go from there. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. Let me know what you think about the elven factions, and let me know if that's even the correct grammar. If anybody knows, is it the elf factions? Like, is elf naturally plural? Or do I have to say elven for plural of elf? Anyways, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Rise of the Phoenix, over and out.